Hi there guys, Joseph Pet here, and today we're looking at Minecraft Pocket Edition 0.8.2. What? 0.8.2? No, this is not a troll. I get this new device that's kind of like Apple TV, but it's from Amazon, and it's called the Fire TV, and you can get a gamepad controller. It's a game controller that's separate. It's like $40. Uh, but anyways, I got one, and the version build of Minecraft Pocket Edition as... 0.8.2 and I don't understand why and I, I maybe it has something to do with the gamepad controller uh you know it's a different build altogether I don't know but let me go ahead and show you the options real quick uh, I normally have a lot more options to deal with but here you have you know you can put your name in you have difficulty you have the first person or third person view invert y axis sensitivity to the controller or the analog stick I guess and then sound, sound volume, and that's it. You don't have the clouds, you don't have high definition, uh, better graphics or anything like that, or distance. So it's very rudimentary on options right now, but uh, let me go back there and you can look at the the button layout. Uh, you know, it's right there. If you wanna look it over, you can pause here. So you can put in external servers. I went ahead and put in uh, LBSG's Infinity Server because that is so awesome. So let me just show you yeah, it loads really fast. This is 1080p. I don't know if you can watch in 1080p on your device or on your PC. All right, so if you want to pull up chat, it's L on the D-pad, and then you press A to enter message or B to exit, and then the same thing with right on the D-pad. Uh, up on the D-pad just moves you forward, you know, just like the left analog stick does, and then down on the D-pad does the chat box also. A is to jump. X is to craft. All right, so Y is for inventory, and there are only 36 slots available, but that, it looks like they may expand that later. See all the gray area that's open? Yeah, load times are pretty smooth. I mean, if you see right there, I've already loaded up a lot of this. See, even on my NVIDIA Shield, it takes a long time to load all this stuff, so... This is pretty impressive, I think. And this is a quad-core processor. It's, uh, I think, 1.7 gigahertz. I'm not sure what kind of processor it is, but it runs really smooth. And it does really well on uh, rendering the far distances. All right, so if I want to place a block, I would go over here and highlight it and then L2. So if I want to go to the next item to the right, it's right bumper, or to the left, it's left bumper. And that'll take me to my little hot bar down there. And then R2 is mine, just like you saw me chopping that wood there. Uh, also on the controller, there's the buttons you would normally have on your screen, the uh, back button, the home button, and menu button. There's a little button that says game circle, and it looks weird, but if I press it, it'll take me back to the dashboard. Because I don't think game circle is active yet. I'm not really sure. I didn't see it on the home screen. But uh, normally it would pop up there. Now also, there's a fast forward and a rewind button and a play button and a pause button. But let's go ahead and we'll do an actual brand new uh, build of a world. All right. And that. All right. So for C, we'll do FRZW, which is one of my favorites of all time. And we'll exit out of there. And we'll do survival mode. Generate world, and it's building terrain right now. And again, this is in 1080p, guys, which uh, that's new to me. Uh, even on my best device, my shield, it's wow. Okay, uh, on my shield, it only runs at 720p. I know there are some Android devices that do a little bit different than that, but I'm just going to start off a little bit here and see if there's any difference because the build is 8.2. But I'm going to go fast forward a little bit into it and see if there's any, like, tricks or bugs. Oh, there's a baddie. That back. There we go. All right, it looks like that's not really a cave. All right, sounds are pretty much the same. All right, so let's fall in this water here. Hopefully. 
Yay! All right. This is the part over here. Okay, so there's baby animals. That's pretty standard. <laughs> Where's my lava? There's a the lava. Alright, I don't see any caves or anything like that. Alright guys, so I came down all the way to bedrock and came up about 10. And I uh, dug all the way this way and I still haven't found any lava. I know it's not that far, but usually you can at least hear lava or see lava or something. And I haven't seen any down here, so I'm pretty sure this is the same build as 8.1 with the exception of the options are a little different and it has gamepad or, uh, you know, the game controller support built into it. So it's a little different, you know, just slightly because it has different programming for the buttons and everything. But for the most part, it's very much the same. Again, uh, it may look a little different because basically this feels like I'm playing an Xbox 360 version of Minecraft, but it's actually the Pocket Edition version. So... It's $6.99 to download it, and this fire thing is pretty awesome so far. Uh, uh, very little lag as far as loading, and it's not half as bad as what I get from my NVIDIA Shield, which is very good. Uh, it's a quad-core processor as well. So hopefully this gives you information you want out of this. Uh, make sure and leave a comment if you have any questions. I'll make sure and uh, read those and address them in the comments. I'll have to check it out and see if there are any um, any ways to import the uh, maps and stuff like that and skins and all that fun stuff. I'm sure there's a way around it, but I just want to give you all a first look at the actual gameplay of the Fire TV and Minecraft Pocket Edition because I know a lot of y'all follow me for that. So hopefully y'all like this. Thanks for watching. Y'all have a good day, and I'll talk to you later. Skizzle!